When you guys hear conversations about white privilege and white supremacy, what, what do you hear? Uh, I just, I, I mean, people usually just bring up white privilege, and uh, I don't know, I live in a privileged area, so I hear it a lot from, the, um, I guess, other races other than people of my color. They just, they're not usually, um, like, saying anything bad. They're just, they're saying how it is, and they're saying how they see it, and usually there's um, better areas, like, where I live near Baltimore County. Baltimore County is not the best area, then, but then where I live, it's a better area. So people make those differences, like real world differences that um, I agree with, but I just, I, I mean, I don't argue with them. I just, just so, witness it how it is. So how, what's, what's it mean though? So, so in other words, do you see yourself as privileged? Yes. What's, what's that mean for you? Um, just means I have it better than other people and I just accept it. What's it? that I might have more money than other people. I mean, I mean, okay. I may be living in a nicer area than other people. Okay, so for, so privilege for you. Privilege, you, what, the, the way this conversation gets defined is that privilege is about resources mm -hmm. and about like money and a house and opportunities and this kind of thing. Uh-huh. Maya, how about you? Um, I haven't obviously benefited from white privilege, I do see it. Um, I, like I said, I grew up in Northern Virginia, which is a predominantly white area. And so I get to experience, not really experience it, but I get to see other people exerting it in everyday life that they don't really uh, realize or recognize. But I can recognize it from my, my background and my experiences. So what would it mean to benefit from white privilege for you? Like, for, like, skin color or... Yeah, it's just what would it... You said, you said, yeah, I haven't really benefited from white privilege. So, mm -hmm. what, what do you mean by that? But I haven't really benefited by it or I've yeah. been kind... So, I think for myself, I am lighter skinned compared to a lot of other black people. And I do recognize that. Um, I do benefit from it because when I'm in more like white environments, a lot more people will come up to me than to my friends who are of darker complexions. Mm -hmm. And they feel more ready to be open and more friendly with me and, and be willing to give me more, not information, but willing to talk more. Just engage Willing more. to engage, yeah. So, so you have benefited from white privilege. Yes, uh -huh. but, I, I, but since I'm not white, I'm not getting the full privilege, but since I am lighter, I'm still benefiting from some of it. So, so what would full privilege, privilege look like? So I think full privilege would be, so I went to, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but George Marshall High School uh -huh. in um, Vienna, Virginia. So like the population I think is 50% white, 30% uh, Asian, and I think 2% black. Uh -huh. And so I've grown up a lot around like white people. And so growing up around them, it's more like, it's not, uh, I think a lot of it is, you're not, unap it's unapologetically going after more like what you want or what you think is yours. And so you don't have to think about other people or your circumstances or surroundings. It's more like you're not, not as inhibited as someone who's kind of more raised with the, you're kind of, because I've kind of raised with some things will limit you because okay. you are a woman, because you are black. Yeah. But with having white privilege, it's one less thing limiting you. Okay, so hang on, let me, I'm just gonna push on to something here. Mm -hmm. um, so you, so you're, you're, what class are, what social class are you? I'm, I said I'm upper middle class. And bro, what, what, how about you? Say so like upper, like upper middle. Upper, upper middle. Okay, so, wait, so then Maya, mm -hmm. but you, Okay, but upper middle, so that allows you to, so you lived then around a certain class of white people also. Yes. Right? And so that's, it's, it's white privilege by extension. Yeah. Okay. Um, Devin, what, what's white, what's, when you hear that white privilege, what's that, what's it mean for you? Um, to me, it just means that, like, my skin color in and of itself does not make my life any harder um, than someone who is a person of color. Mm -hmm. Like, I will never question if something, you know, if something bad happens to me, 
was it a result of my skin color? I hope well, that makes sense. Okay. Well, yeah, except that things could happen to you that you could, like, maybe not get a job or something because you're white. Like, someone's getting like, yeah, I can't hire you because you're white. We need more black and brown people. There are all sorts of things that could happen to you. I just want to push on that a little bit. Um, I mean, from my perspective, I grew up in Philadelphia, so I do hear, like, both sides of, uh -huh. um, I guess, the white privilege thing from white people, I mean. Um, mm -hmm. Like, there are white people that I know that grew up with not a lot, and so they think that they can't possibly be privileged. Well, but, okay, hang on, hang on. Let's go with you, though. Okay. So you identify as lower... Yeah, or when low growing up, I was lower middle class. Um, now I'd say I'm more working class. Okay, family. okay, so... But is that, did you, wait, hang on. You're upper middle class. Lower. Middle class, yeah. Lower, lower middle class, working class, right? Mm -hmm. Can, Maya, wait, wait, do you have more privilege than Maya? Dude, she's living in a really sweet neighborhood, by the way. But I, I do have white privilege. Um, would I say that her life is privileged in other ways? I'm sure. But her skin color versus my skin color, I will always get the upper hand. Always? I'd say so. Do you guys, do you agree with that? Daniel, do you agree with that? She's, she's always going to get the upper hand over Maya? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say always, but usually yes with being white. Maya, do you think that? I think yes. I, I mean, I'm not sure what her, uh, I think it depends on if it's what the situation is, but I think in most places, in most cases, yes. Yeah. Huh. So listen, let, let me just say, I want to say something about where, where, I'm, where, where I'm going here, right? Um, for me, as, a, as an instructor, we like throw these terms around a lot, like white privilege and white supremacy and whiteness and white this and white that and whatever. Like white people just have power and white people are special and white people, whatever, right? And then I'm like, I'm going to just sit in, I'm going to... I'm going to just take you and I'm going to say, all right, let's just put you in the, in the lower class for a moment, okay? So you're going to be your representative. Instead of lower middle class, working class. I grew up in the working class. So like I, I'm there on that. So like, but I'm going to just hold you there. Um, but like, look, the way I see it is like th these, these two right here, Daniel and Maya, they, they have... They have some things, like if you went to their neighborhoods, right, I can, because I just, I know, I know where y'all live, right? If you saw the cars their family drove and their neighbors drove and this kind of thing, and you were, and, would, do you think if you really saw that, would, okay, I'm, I'm going to, and, and, and let's pretend for a moment that Daniel isn't white, that he's black, because they're, dude, first off, you do understand, there are black people in this room who can, who are rich <laughs> like rich man y'all y'all know who you are and maybe at some point i'll bring you'll come up here later in the semester but like come on man maybe maya is one of them but the point being like <laughs> let's let's uh let's i just want to i just want to open this conversation up a little bit right like how do we get to this place where it's just automatically assumed like you have, dude, imagine where Maya lives for a second. And you're sitting here going like, yeah, but I have this privilege. And I'm like, dude, go home with her over Thanksgiving break, man. And come back and report back to us. Like, I don't know. What do you, what do you, what do you? I think because I have been exposed, like my, my roommate, he's from Colombia. Um, he drives a Benz, um, and it's like his prized possession. So Wait, I, Columbia, the country of Colombia? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so he has always been somebody that I look up to in his work ethic and whatnot. But I still feel that on the topic of white privilege, that's in, it's intrinsic to my identity. You know what I mean? Like there is no... Um, like, my social class and my social upbringing is not readable when I walk into a room. What is readable is my skin color. Yeah, I, I got you. It's kind of like Isabella, right, a little bit, right? Like, I know, like, if I, I know the, the, the upper class in Quito, so I know where Isabella's from. I know, I know who she is, right? But 
okay. This is poverty in the U.S., okay? This is d defined in different ways. Look, you got 40 million poor white people in the U.S. What do, you, what do you say to all those white people, those 40 million white people? Hang on, look right in the camera, <laughs> actually. <laughs> and what do you say to them? Um, well, poverty isn't always generational, but that is a giant factor in a lot of people's upbringings and how, how much mon wealth they have. Because a lot of things that, uh, well, I think me, I've had discussions before about what is wealth and what is, what's the difference mm -hmm. between wealth and having money. Yeah. And having yeah, wealth yeah. is meaning that you can tide it over to future generations and that they'll be okay. But having money is just you having enough for yourself in this lifetime. Okay. And I think a lot of factors play into, uh, a lot of people do have money, but not a lot of people have wealth. And I think that's a giant thing, that and financial literacy also, and knowing what to do with that. Okay, all right. Now, you know what you just sounded like right there? You sounded like a really privileged, uh, educated, smart American. Forget about the fact that you're black for a second. You sounded like a privileged American in that response right there. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to look into the camera and I want you to talk to 40 million white people who all have white privilege. So hang on, white people, 40 million white people. You have, <laughs> y'all have a shit ton of white privilege. And no matter what, when you walk into a room, your whiteness is gonna get you things. Like people are just gonna throw shit at you because you're white, you know, and that's how it works. Um, but Maya right now and Daniel and Devin, they're gonna talk to you and tell you how you should think about all that white privilege you have, okay? All right, so go ahead, Ma. What are you gonna say? Um, I'm not really sure I understand the question. Well, you got but... it. Good, yeah, I got it. Oh, hang on. Here you go, you ready? Mm -hmm. uh, hold on, I'm gonna, I'll do this. <laughs> Here's the question. Dude, <laughs> I'll just sit right here. So I'm, I'm one of those white people, okay? <laughs> and uh, I'm going like, man, the fuck? <laughs> I have privilege? Like I can't, I can go see the doctor. I can't, I can't do shit. I'm poor, man. I'm working three jobs. I'm barely hanging on. And like, where's my privilege? Just being white? Like, where's my privilege, man? Like, I'm so poor, I can't even get a job at Walmart. Like, where's my privilege? All right, that's what I want you to respond to. Okay. Um, <laughs> so what I'd say to that is... No, to those people. Uh, to those people. To you, actually, you. You could say to you. Okay. To you. <laughs> what you can think of is white privilege is not just this uh, God complex. It's not, oh, I'm inherently better. It's not, I should have this job because I am white. It's because you get those little advantages. Those little, when you say you have nothing, when, I mean, if you're white and poor, you still are white. And that in itself with our country's history does give you a little leverage over people of color. And Wait, over you? Yes. I've, I've been- well, Hang on, hang, hang yeah. on. Let me ask you this. Would you rather be poor and white? Poor okay. and white, okay? You grew up, your mom works at a diner 20 hours a week because she's home taking care of her disabled father and your father is kind of I don't know a crackhead right and you're white okay would you rather be and you know really trying to survive maybe disabled not forget mm -hmm. the crackhead thing disabled like really working hard or or you ready mm -hmm. or would you rather be you of course I want to be me because okay. I know well, I know myself but no 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 hang no no I am not talking about that know. my friend <laughs> I'm talking about you mm -hmm. black and wealthy because you're in the richest 1% of the world's population. So am I, by the way. So are you, by the way. Okay. The richest 1% of the world's population. So, Devin's, you're down a little bit, but you're all right. <laughs> would you rather be that person in white, or would you rather be you? Um, I mean, sometimes 
I would think that I'd rather be white, but I think with who I am now, I'd rather be my, who, uh, in my circumstances. All right, bro, what would you say? Thanks, man. Hey, by the way, I, I'm totally putting you on the spot. You got that, right? <laughs> I mean, you got, there's no answer to this. Like, basically, I'm just kind of backing you against a wall, and I'm going to see how you're going to come away from it. But, dude, how about you? Like, what are you, what are you, what are you going to say to all your white brothers and sisters out there who are really poor? Uh, I would just say it depends person to person how much money they have, how much money they grow up with. Um, it also could depend on where they're from, the opportunities that they have, I don't know, or just going to school, getting a job, things that, you know... Dude, you're talking like a white, you know what you're yeah, talking yeah. like right now? You're just talking like a white guy who doesn't want to say anything racist, yeah. right? <laughs> it's like, because, holy shit, I'll get canceled and like my life will fall yeah. apart and then I'll have to be like a Catholic priest the rest of my life or something, right? <laughs> just seeking alms from the poor. Look, is that what priests do? Do they do that anymore? I don't think they do that. All right, dude. I'm talking about this conversation we're having about white privilege, and I want you to go, go down into inner city Baltimore. Don't look, it's Baltimore, inner city Baltimore is 65% black, but pick out just the poor white people, and I want you to speak to them about their privilege. Um, compared to all the rich black and brown people, including in this room, by the way. What do you, how do you, what do you, what do you, what do you say? I would say an example like that, I mean, changes the idea of white privilege. I don't know, if maybe if they're walking to a certain kind of store, they have white privilege. Um, you mean but, so like, some, like the security guard doesn't follow them around? Mm -hmm. Certain things like that, but... Okay, hang you, on. What kind of car do you, does your mom drive? Uh, what kind of car she drives? Yeah. She, she don't likes tell me a Tesla. No, Benz? my family doesn't own a Tesla. All right, okay. But because um, you only own Ferraris, like what, hmm? I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, what, what kind of car do you drive? Um, I drive. So I drive one of my parents' cars. Uh, I drive mainly a Honda Accord. All right, okay. Oh, that's all yeah. right. That's cool. All right, dude. What? I'm just as a white guy. I'm asking you as a as a privileged white guy, which you are. I'm asking you, how do you respond to your, like you just, what you do, you do what uh, other white people do, you just get into this white, like white privilege conversation about, yeah, well, I'm privileged because I have this because I'm white. And I'm like, what about those 40 million people, man? You gotta, you gotta take account of them. How do you take account of them? I mean, I guess those, the less, I know less wealthy white people, they still can have some white privilege, but they have the thought in the back of their head that there's people like their same skin color that have more privilege than them. So it becomes, I don't know, less of a factor in their lives. But um, I would say the lower class white people still have some kind of white privilege, even if they don't know it. I don't know. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Dude, that's, that's fair. I'm not good. Devin, as someone who grew up without a lot, do you sometimes hear this conversation about, do, do you, when I say there's rich black and brown people in this class, mm -hmm. you know what that means, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like really rich. Yeah. How do you feel? How do you feel what, if they talk about their, the fact that you have all this privilege and like they don't, do you have any thoughts? Like, what, do you have anything you want to say to them? I think I, I feel differently because, you know, once upon a time, I had a hard time wrapping my mind around the same question. Like, how mm -hmm. could I have white privilege when I grew up in the way that I did? Mm -hmm. But our identities are intersectional. We have, you know, various, we're existing, existing in various systems of oppression and privilege. And so in that, sure, there are factors working against me, but there are factors working for me. And one of them happens to be that I am white. And so to all those white poor people, um, sure, you're oppressed because you have a lower social class, but you are still advantaged because you are white. You are the dominant group. All right. Okay. Um, hey, I'm not going to, I don't need, I'm not going to push any further because like, whatever you, you understand, you, you all get what I'm doing here, right? I'm, I'm saying like, we got to get outside of these like really narrow 
confines of how we think about certain things. And we need to just like up, up the game a little bit, like get out of it, right? Because these things are really complex and we don't want simple stories. You don't want some, if you're thinking like all the other people are thinking, you're not thinking very smart in a very smart way. All right, we have a, okay, thanks, man. Th- deal it. Th- thanks, thanks for going with me, y'all, right? All right, okay.